har på stedet, så vil jeg ha kontor brødt. Og hvis jeg alle her kjenner i telefonen her, de gir opp at de så stort er presset. Vi har lett timer sånn her fra kommunestyrelse. Skal innleder til å levne røde til det. Hej, Maria Timmersson heter jag och finns inte på kommunstyrelsen men under kommunstyrelsen i en liten funktion som heter koordineringsfunktionen. Och där jobbar jag tillsammans med två kollegor med att koordinera stadens förvaltningar och bolag i arbetet med det västsvenska paketet och Älvstaden bland annat. Eh, vad roligt att få vara här idag och att det var så mycket folk här. Eh, som ni vet så växer ju Göteborg. Vi växer mycket mer än vad vi hade bestämt oss för att växa. När det gäller våra tillväxtmål så överträffar vi dem. Och vi växer kanske mer än vad vi trodde var möjligt. Och det gör ju också att för att kunna fortsätta att växa på det sättet som vi vill göra och som vi har bestämt oss för att göra så har vi ju några frågor längs vägen som vi behöver reda ut. Infrastrukturen är ju en del i det. Eh, och det västsvenska paketet är ju väldigt mycket det som vi hoppas och tror ska vara en hjälp på vägen åt att klara det. Och den här övergångsperioden är ju ganska smärtsam eh, med tanke på folkomröstningar och annat i en stad som sedan 1926 har tillverkat bilar så tänker jag att den här omställningen är ännu mer smärtsam kanske i en stad där man älskar bilar och har tillverkat bilar här under så lång tid. Men inte desto mindre så tar vi steg i riktningen att vi behöver ska fler människor kunna arbeta här och också bo här så måste vi ställa om och öka andelen resenärer i kollektivtrafik. Vad vi också måste göra för att fortsätta växa det är att stärka kärnan. Och där är ju arbetet med eldstaden och visionen och strategierna för eldstaden väldigt viktiga. Och att stärka kärnan och det här med infrastrukturen det är ju väldigt mycket centrala området som vi hamnar i med alla de här olika frågorna. Uh, och egentligen tänkte jag bara säga på engelska to the teams. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, that you put so much hard work and effort into this work. And we firmly believe that we will have um, a very good use of your work. Because this area has been of great importance to the city for several hundred years. And uh, in the future, this area will, the significance of this area will be even greater. So, your work will hopefully be great news to us, and we will listen very carefully to what you have to say. Thank you. Hej, mitt namn är Eva Westmar. Jag kommer vara moderator för den här eftermiddagen och för den frågestund som kommer efter presentationerna från perspektiven. Det allra viktigaste är nödutgångar. Vi har en längst ner till höger eller vänster till sida och sen har vi en där vi kommer in. Toaletter finns här bak tror jag. Jag ska bara, skulle vilja kort berätta vad vi ska göra idag. Först så kommer vi ha en presentation från tre stycken internationella arkitektiv och vi kommer att presentera dem allt eftersom de kommer upp här på scenen. Eh, och sen, det kommer att ta ungefär en kvart per presentation och sen kommer vi samla frågor och reflektioner som ni har till en halvtimmes diskussion efterfrågande. Eh, så jag tänker att vi ska gå rätt på och presentera den första eh, gruppen som är SLA, Henning Larsson arkitekt. Och eh, social action. Så so please. Så so please för. Jag, jag ska bara nämna ett par ord. Eh, varför vi jobbar med det här och eh, vilka uppdrag som tiden har fått. Eh, flera av er känner till det men för många kan det vara en nyhet. 
Och varför ska vi arbeta med det här området? Det är alltså det som är markerat med ljusa prickar här. Det är området från Göta Älvbro, Göta Älv, ner till och med Drottningtorget. Från Nordstan och en bit in mot Gullbörsfass. Och det är det här området som tidigare har varit studerat för trafikanläggningar som ska göra det här mer tillgängligt för kollektivtrafik bland annat. Men det är också väldigt präglat av ett trafik, av hårda ytor, parkeringar och annat. Och det här har då betydelsen att utvecklas till en del av Göteborgs city och det kommer vara en betydelsefull del av regionen och regionens kärna. Det är också det området där man kopplar de nya stora utvecklingsområdena Gullbörsvass och Frihamnen. Och vi är också nära den byggda staden och älven som de tillgångar som det innebär. Så därför arbetar vi med helheten i det här området för att få en attraktiv välkomnande stad. Och det är också med utgångspunkt från det som vi har bett de här tre teamen titta på framförallt helheten. Hur åstadkommer vi den attraktiva, eh, välkomnande stadsmiljön här i regionkärna? Hur vänder vi det här som på många sätt är en baksida till en framsida? Jag har också betonat att detta är de första idéskisserna. Det är inga färdiga planer utan vi kommer då att ta hand om detta och arbeta med detta under hösten. Så varsågod, Mette. Tack så mycket, Lena. And now I'm switching over to English, I completely forgot. Um, I'm Mette Scott from SLA Architects. We work with urban planning and landscape. And we are in a team with Henning Larsen, Pierre Hansson and uh, Tobias Lau, Social Action. Uh, we have been working with the River City Vision for two years and we are very happy to uh, present what we have been working with the last six to seven weeks on the, on the area around Central Station area. We, uh, have, uh, we have a working method that we, where we keep asking ourselves questions about what is it that we are solving in this area or what is it that we are trying to solve. Uh, our question for uh, what I will go through later is what if the identity of the central station area could be transformed from smog to hustle into butterflies and play. So that is what I will try to answer in the following. Our theme of looking at the area is to look at content What's the content of the area, the future content, uh, and what's the density? How do we densify the area with more uh, offices, more buildings, and more dwellings, as in more houses? And then the scale of it, the scale uh, according to us as persons, and cars, and green, and buildings. And uh, with that, we will uh, we think we have found a new strategy for Gothenburg. But we start here with the central area, station area. The area, as, uh, as Lena also uh, showed you, is uh, dominated by infrastructure. Uh, we have measured and we have some, uh, some initial measurements that, that cover us that almost 70% of the surface in the area is uh, infrastructure. And still, it's a little bit ambiguous because this is actually a hotspot in Gothenburg. This is the place where you have the most people walking, the most pedestrian in transit, either from one bus to another collective traffic, or you have people walking to the city center, to their workplaces. And, and on the same time, you have a space that is optimized for vehicle infrastructure, car traffic, and so forth. So that's an, a bit, uh, it's a little bit ambiguous that, um, and we think there's an opportunity here to actually create a warm welcome uh, to Gothenburg. So can we transform all this spaghetti, all this uh, infrastructure uh, in Gothenburg into uh, 
from smog to butterflies. And this doesn't imply that we have to remove a lot of infrastructure, but just to think, uh, think while we improve infrastructure and while we improve the urban space, and then create more out of it than just infrastructure. The challenges um, in the area is that there's a lot, a lot of traffic barriers uh, and still we have to uh, make a new business area here in the central station area. We have br the new bridge, UTL bridge, that's called the Hissingsborn, the ramps that connects the room with this, uh, the urban spaces and a new viaduct over the railways or the rail tracks. You have Utah Tunnel and the E45, and then you also have a chance of imposing 250,000 square meters of new city in this area. So that's what we dealt with in the following. Our next question is, what added value will you as citizens of Gothenburg get with this invested a lot of Swedish money in, uh, in new infrastructure? How can we make the central station area a more livable city with this investment. So to get more out of it just to make better infrastructure. Then we had a brief look at the users and their needs. What's the potential users of the area and what would be their needs? One potential guest that is not so often seen in the area at the moment is a family. They need a safe and comfortable environment to stay, play and shop in. Another one could be the commuter that uh, transits between uh, bus or train. He needs fast and efficient commute to commute and, and, appeal, uh, and an appeal uh, to, to make the waiting time more fun. The non-motorist user or uh, the, uh, the elderly generations need safe accessibility and a place to dwell and pass. Uh, the worker, uh, the, the business people and the inhabitants, the residents of the area wants access to workplace and comfortable surroundings, fun outdoor spaces and safe traffic environments. So this uh, brings us then forward to actually looking at the site again, where, where at this map we have uh, mapped what there is of green in the area. Uh, this building is uh, Nordstam shopping center <coughs> and just in front of that you have uh, remains of the old historic rampart. I think it's six or seven or eight large trees. And then you have a little bit out in front of here as a green space. And um, yeah, so green is very sparsely represented in the area. So uh, we recommend that we, you actually uh, cover part of uh, the E45 and uh, we have sort of a working title that we call could we make that a city oasis so you have uh, an experience when you walk from the central station and connect down to the river <coughs> we also recommend we have been imposed on a lot of in infrastructural ideas in the area that you actually simplify it and make it simple so so everybody or make it so simple so that structure strategy everybody can uh, agree on. And then we we would we uh, we uh, recommend to introduce much more green in the area to so actually make a microclimate where people can engage and move and transit and store and dwell. So this is not an expression of making a lot of making a green park in the area, but an expression of to add more green than there is today. Then we imposed uh, what we find as a maximum volume healing the city together with uh, the city centre, uh, and here we have made approximately three hundred fifty thousand square meters on the site. And, and in the brief from the municipality, it's mainly uh, offices. 80% offices and 20% buildings. Then we, wait, then we went um, 
on to actually mapping the microclimate conditions at the site. Um, I don't know if there's one I can point with. Is, is it this one? No. Okay. I just tried to explain it. The, uh, on the upper left corner, you have a map that actually maps the existing wind conditions at the area. Um, if you are a person and you should stop and dwell in an urban space, you should, uh, it's possible in the bluish areas. Um, so what we did when we um, made this new master plan is that we actually went back and forward and saw how can we, with the buildings, actually make more qualitative urban spaces in between the buildings while we add these 250,000 square meters. Oh, what happened? Is it because my time is out? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just wrap up. So again, it's actually to think about wind and sun condition in the area. Not that you only want the sunny spots all over, but, but be more precise about how you program, how what content you put into the public space and make it sure make sure that it's actually a nice place to be. So buildings and outdoor spaces are adapted to wind, sun, and context. There's always a park. Oh, thank you. Instead, uh, at this image you can see how we, uh, we added on 250,000 square meters. And, and with this approach, we, we are actually mimicking and adapting to what you know as the Gothenburg scale. And actually, we, from that, we are adding even more smaller parks. So there's a, there's a theory that said if you have a park of green just outside your door or outside your window, you use all the other parks more and that, and that, you, and that you sort of move more in the city. So the idea is here both to introduce roof gardens and small pocket parks where it's, uh, that, could have, that could be different themed according both to offices and dwellings. The new green transport hub, the other team, Gula Gula and Swiss will come more into that, but the idea of the station of actually being a tra green transport hub that welcomes uh, people to Gothenburg, but also really represents Gothenburg as, a, as the fantastic city as it is. This is a distribution of the different square meters, I'll go over that, but the idea is 8,000 workplaces and 1,000 residents. So there would be a daily uh, transit of almost 9,000 more people, in, is at least in the prospect. This is uh, then the master plan. Yeah. This is the existing Niels Eriksson's terminating um, and here we actually recommend uh, a super recreational bike path. In Copenhagen we have the... Um, we have... Uh, there it is. This one, this red one, is actually... Here you have Morsam and here you have uh, Niels Eriksson's terminating. But here we are introducing or we are suggesting um, that the old trace track of Jutta Elbrun is transformed into a super recreational super bike path but also a super pedestrian bike so it's optimized for soft road users and then we add extra square meters here and make a collective corridor for the collective traffic here at, uh, just outside uh, the train station and we see Alexander's time no, I know that I'm running out of time but uh, content and identity, we have made some mappings to, to create a diversified and manifold content in the area. So it's not a monofunctional city where you only work and then how, how can the outdoor space complement uh, a manifold experience. And these are uh, the different users uh, on the different spots, meaning that these different areas actually um, accommodate their needs and their wishes. Some ideas on how these spaces could be uh, could be designed. And this is Nils Eriksson's Platz as it is today. 
when you en enter east towards uh, the tunnel underneath the Mercerik Samskotan towards Nordstar. Uh, and this is how we could would suggest that it possible our life and the, and an area could be and where you have actually the uh, here the super the super green recreational track uh, on the on the old Bjutal track and over here you see the tramps and you have this infrastructural corridor. Tomorrow we have suggested some events and open air cinema music. We could even have a no no car week in the Ericsson Scott and, and, and actually challenge the traffic a little bit and see what happens. I mean all Car drivers are people, so they are intelligent, they find their ways. It's been done many, many places before. So coming back to where we start, what added value will the citizens of Gothenburg get when all these money are invested in new infrastructures? We propose that in the future, that for every old street we remove, uh, we add green value back to the city. Put to an extreme, it would be, this would be the use of uh, the old bridge. You actually make it a park. And if we ask the planners and the city council of Gothenburg to transform the space out infrastructure into green space, what will the answer be? We don't know, but we think and we assume, we hope, that the answer from the citizens will be a yes. Learning from history, 200 years ago, when the city was growing and the rampart lost its function as uh, securing uh, the city center, uh, the city decided to turn the space into a green recreational park, which you all um, cherish from today. Uh, can we learn from that, from the past, and, and, and do it again? So give back some green recreational spaces to the city central station. This is where we started, the area today, and overlaying all the intentions and the ideas that you saw, uh, we have made uh, an image of what we think the future would bring. So I promised my team that I would go back one and forward one once again. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Hello, Henry Larsson, arkitekter och social action. Eh, som Lena nämnde så har de här tre teamen arbetat med helheten på området. Men de har också fått ett speciellt fokus. Så det som vi precis hörde här, det handlar om hur centralområdet faktiskt kan vara med till att stärka kärnan. Om innehållet, om tätheten, om skalan.